Welcome to a new episode of the First Person Controller Serian Armory 3D. In this episode we will create an advanced movement that allows us to walk on up on slopes. I hope that you will like it. So let's start. As you can see it looks different from the last time. I added here some slopes to demonstrate the advanced movement. We will make changes in our first person controller no tree. In the end it will look like this. Please don't get confused, I will explain everything about the changes we make. We will only edit the movement tree. The other ones like jumping or the mouse look tree doesn't get touched. We will use physics to move our player instead of translating. We get more realistic results by using physics. As you can see moving our player without using physics leads us to weird results. Here I have the old movement node tree. We will start now creating our advanced movement tree. First drag a new window out and set it to logic nodes. Here we used very simple translate nodes to get our player to move. We can select everything and simply delete it. We need to add first an update node to constantly execute tasks. In the advanced movement tree we have a few tasks that we want to execute it in an ordered sequence. We can add as many tasks as we want. In the first task we want to set a new property. We call this property Duffer Direction. The value for this property is a vector. In a vector there is stored for every direction a float value. That means for x axis, for y axis and for the z axis. With this property we can control which direction we want to move. The value is constantly set to zero because it is connected by an update node. A vector is simply like a list that holds the position of the x, y and the z axis. For example this vector holds the position of an object 1.5 on x, 3.2 on y and 0 units on the z axis. For our use case we only need the x and y axis to either move forward and backwards or left and right. The first task is done. We have to decide now where our player should move when a key on the keyboard is pressed. The first thing we need to do is to check if or key is pressed. With a gate node we can check this. We also add a keyboard node to get input. We connect the input from the yellow dot to get a true or false. We start off with moving forward so we set the key here to W. To check if it's true with the second value we add a boolean node. We want to check if it's true so we enable to true. So if it's true that we are moving forward then we set the direction property. Obviously we want to move forward so we need to add value to the y axis in the vector value. 
we need to call our property to add the value on it. As I said we want to move forward. This means we add a 1 to the positive y axis. We can duplicate this and do it with every direction. Here we just need to change to the S key and also the value. Because walking backwards, the Y axis has to be set negative. We can duplicate it again and do it for the left and right direction. If we want to move left with the A key, we need to set minus 1 to the X axis because we are moving on the X axis. We can duplicate once again and set it for the right direction. And here we set it to positive because if we are moving right then we are moving in the positive direction. To test now if we are walking in the right direction we can add a print node and print out our direction property value. Before starting our game we first need to enable our debug console. As you can see if we start moving we can see that at the X and Y position the value goes up to 1 if we are moving in the positive direction and negative in the other direction. To understand this better. Every time we press one of the movement keys we set a new value to our property. If we are moving forward in the Y axis then we set a 1 at the Y position in our vector property. If we are moving in the opposite direction then the value gets inverted. The same process goes with left and right. If we are moving right the X value on our vector property gets added by 1. If we are walking forward and right, then both numbers gets added by 1 because we are moving in the positive direction. Here we are just walking left in the opposite direction, so it's negative. If we are moving backwards and left we are moving in both directions negative. With this method we constantly get the moving directions. The second task is done. We head now to the third and last task. In the last task we set the player's movement. Before that we need to normalize our direction to prevent any movement bug. We simply connect a vector math node and set it to normalize. We call our direction property and connect it to the math normalize node.
after the value got normalized we can directly add a node called set RB velocity. This is the node we need to actually get our player to move. Here at the linear input we can set a value to move our player to the set direction. Here at the bottom we set everything to zero. This is for tilting the object that we don't want. Here we need now to calculate the right direction. We need a transform to vector node to get the right look direction. To always walk in the looking direction we need to multiply it with the direction property that we recently assigned. We call our property and connect it to the vector math node. It's important that we separate our direction vector. For this we simply use the separate node. We only need the y-axis from our direction vector property. We copy that and do it for the left and right direction. So to mix everything up we add those results together and connect it to the linear velocity input. What we basically want is to move in the direction where we currently looking. To calculate the right direction even if we are looking somewhere else we have to multiply our moving direction property with the player's looking transform direction. What we want is to move in any direction independently. Easier said, we want to travel on our local axis instead of the global world axis. If we test our game we can see that we can move but it is very slow. The reason for that is that we did not multiply it with our movement speed. Earlier we only set one which is very slow. Here we can multiply the direction with our movement speed property that we created in one of the last videos. One little thing we need to change is the value for the movement speed. Currently 0.1 is way too slow, because we are moving now with physics and not in units with the translate node. In that case we can change the normal speed to 8 and for the sprinting speed 12. Now we can move faster and it's perfect. You can still change the speed if you are not satisfied. There is still one problem left. We currently cannot fall. The reason for this is that we did not define the z-axis. We only defined x and y. Before we plug our direction into the velocity node we set our falling direction. We add a get rb velocity node. We need the linear velocity and separate it to get the z-axis. We add a simple math node to subtract half of it. Here we add a vector node to set everything in one.
This is everything we need. We can now play our game without any problems. The physics are still not very perfect because Armory 3D is still in development but you can make a simple FPS game with this. Here you can clean everything up to have everything in sight. Because we are using physics, the jumping strength could be different. You can still change it to something higher or lower. Another thing to keep in mind is to change the gravity if it's necessary, but for this controller you can leave it to the normal value minus 9.8. That is basically it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if it helped you. See you next time.